we'll have a final closing uh, announcement by Dean Taylor. I will make some uh, final remarks and we'll give a final round of applause after my remarks to the entire panel. Dean Taylor. <clears throat> Soren Kierkegaard once said, the matter is quite simple. The Bible is very easy to understand. But we Christians are a bunch of scheming swindlers. We pretend to be unable to understand it because we know very well that the minute we understand, we are obliged to act accordingly. Take any words in the New Testament and forget everything except pledging yourself to act accordingly. My, you'll say, if I do that, my whole life will be ruined. How would I ever get on in the world? And then he continues to say, herein lies the real place of Christian scholarship. Christian scholarship is the church's prodigious invention to defend itself against the Bible, to ensure that we can continue to be good Christians without the Bible coming too close. Oh, priceless scholarship, what would we do without you? Dreadful it is to fall into the hands of the living God. Yes, it is even dreadful to be alone with the New Testament. End quote. Yes, the matter really is quite simple. As a matter of fact, Jesus put his teachings in very simple terms. It was just two words, follow me. But there's a lot in those two words. There has been many ways that the teachings of Jesus have been ignored throughout the centuries. I was told by churches in my youth that Jesus' words for a different dispensation, a millennial reign or for heaven or something. But I eventually had to ask seriously, how hard is it to love your enemies in heaven? Ultimately, I had to come to terms with the fact that these teachings are for today. At a very basic level, I finally had to ask myself, can a person be a follower of Christ without following Christ? It seems ridiculous to ask such a question like this, but in some ways, that is what we are arguing here today. But see, the hard part, however, for all of us is that following Jesus eventually leads to a cross. The good news is that because of the resurrection, in the truest sense, we never really die. This promise of the resurrection gave incredible power to the early church. When you have confidence what your eternity will be like, it really affects the way you live your life. Jesus said, whoever does not bear his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. And that doesn't mean we have a martyrdom complex, but it does mean having a theology of martyrdom. A life that is genuinely dead to ourselves, but alive to Christ. Without this, all the teachings of Christ are nonsense. Simple, but not easy. I think the what-if questions that we discuss here are the best ones that are asked in these types of debates. We can ask tough questions about theology or scary things that happen in history. When it comes home, it's harder. But the truth is, at times, bad stuff does happen, as we've said. But see, Christians have a secret weapon. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, the Apostle Paul gives us what I call the Christian nuclear warhead. Now just take for a moment and conjure up any and every what if that you can possibly imagine. What if Hitler was not stopped? What if someone breaks into my house? What if someone kicks my dog? Anything. Now listen to what the Apostle says. Quote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? For it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Honestly, that just doesn't sound like just war theory to me. Then he continues, yet in all these things, all those terrible things, in all these things we are more than conquerors. He continues, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Did he leave anything out? I don't think he did. This is the theology of martyrdom. And with that, we can be more than conquerors. Okay. At the end of his life, the defeated emperor, Napoleon, was exiled to a remote island off the coast of Africa. There, humbled by defeat and imprisonment, he wrote something very revealing in his journal. Quote, I know men, and I tell you that Jesus Christ is no mere man. 
Between him and every other person in the world, there is no possible term of comparison. Alexander the Great, Caesar, and Charlemagne, and I founded empires, but on what did we rest the creation of our genius? Upon force. Jesus Christ founded his empire upon love, and at this hour, millions of people would die for him. Are you one of them? Join us. And together, let's strengthen the church, spreading His kingdom by lifting up the teachings and example of Christ to the healing of the nations.